my name is Genevieve Bell and I am the director of the School of Cybernetics here at the Australian National University. Uh, I am the inaugural director and this school is on a journey that started about 18 months ago. Uh, and on this call, you have various members of my school and uh, what we like to lovingly call the friends of our community. And what we thought we'd do over the next half an hour is introduce this series. And then in the second half an hour, we're gonna have the first of our external uh, cybernetic snacks. Bill, you didn't know you were a snack, but that's how we're going to describe you, <laughs> <laughs> which I figured you might like. Uh, yeah. I want to begin the way we begin all of our conversations here at the School of Cybernetics and indeed often here in Australia, which is by acknowledging on whose country we meet. Today, I am sitting on the lands of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people, and I want to pay my respects to elders past and present of this place and acknowledge that we're on land that was always sacred and never ceded. I also want to pay my respects to elders and ancestors and traditional owners on all the lands that my words are going out to today. Uh, I know that includes many people around Australia and a special shout out to the eight different traditional owner groups of the place where Bill finds himself today, which include the Eastern Band of the Cherokee, the Lumbee, the Menorin, the Saponi, the Wakanor, and the Kahari. Uh, and we want to think about all the other places where there are traditional owners and elders and pay our respects to all of them. And to remember that these are not conversations about the present. These are conversations about the present and the future. Uh, I also like it when the technology is the way it is. <laughs> so acknowledgements of country, also a place where people can pause no matter where they are and think about whose lands they're on and remember why you don't always know that and why I think you always should. So with all of that said, welcome to another experiment here at the School of Cybernetics. Uh, I think of this school as being an experiment. Um, I'm fairly certain if there is an advice book in life, there is a chapter entitled, do not start a new school during a pandemic. Do not start a new school at a university that hasn't had a new school started in 40 years in a pandemic. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I'm not good at reading the rule books. And I thought, why don't we start a new school of cybernetics in a pandemic? So we did. Uh, it has been an extraordinary adventure thus far and journey, and it builds on an extraordinary adventure that I have been lucky enough to be on with some people on this call for nearly five years. And in that process, we have learned to think about doing things iteratively. We've learned the virtues of trying things that seem insane. We have learned uh, why it is that you need more voices in the room than less, and why it is that it is best to have those voices come from as many a range of places as possible. In our very first years, long before the School of Cybernetics in the 3A Institute, uh, Amy and I and a few others kicked off a series where we just invited everyone I knew to come and spend time with our students. <laughs> it's kind of like, hi, you know me, this is dangerous. Please come and give a lecture about a topic that you care about and then spend three hours with our students. Uh, secretly, that was a good recruiting technique. Uh, Andrew Mears and Alexander Seferoglu came to us that way. And the Vice Chancellor of the Australian National University, who I can't quite convince that he should become a faculty member, does come every year and talk about uh, the stars and finding signal in noise. Those were always in-person things. And that meant that we had to get people to Canberra or find people in Canberra. I think one of the interesting side effects of the pandemic has opened up our vistas, I think in lots of places, to bringing other kinds of voices into the room. We could invite people to Canberra who we couldn't ordinarily get here or who couldn't get here themselves. And it opened up all kinds of ways of thinking about collaborations and engagements. Of course, it also meant that we started to learn that where you could run a three and a half hour workshop with everyone, you probably didn't want to do that over Zoom too often. Uh, and so really here, what we've tried to do is something that's a little bit more uh, tailored to this part of our lives in the pandemic and this part of our lived experiences. So shorter conversations, highly facilitated, designed to be a bit of a provocation. Uh, we decided to build them as a set of six. So as Amy likes to call it, the snack pack. So think of these as being small, consumable, discrete pieces where there will be a hole. Um, we'd like to invite everyone to attend all of them, not just one. This is not pick your favorite thing and then leave everything else on the plate. <laughs> This is a try everything to see if you suddenly discover that actually chocolate covered ants is the thing you most want in your life moving forward. I mean, I could probably both have shared points of view about chocolate covered ants. 
Yeah, I actually don't mind them, Amy. They're all better than spice-covered ants, but, you know. I feel like boiled carp is at the bottom of my list, Genevieve, but that's maybe a story for a different day. Yeah, that was always poi for me. <laughs> and cold wombat. Anyway. <laughs> Moving right along. So if you're already here, then you've worked out how to participate. And we're very excited as a result to kick this off. So we know that in building this school, we are being a little I think cheeky is the right word. We were very conscious two years ago when we were starting to talk about this school and 18 months ago when we kicked it off, that starting a school of cybernetics was uh, not where the rest of the world was necessarily at. And we were aware that in calling it a school of cybernetics, it came with a history and it came with not just one, but many histories, and that those histories were complicated and messy and contested, and that we were going to have to find our way through all of that and find a distinctive place for ourselves in all of that. Here, we know that that for us in the Australian context and in the context of this university and in the context of it being 2022 looking forward, we know that it is about for us establishing cybernetics as an important tool for navigating major societal transformations. We know it's about capability building and policy development, and it's about safe and sustainable and responsible approaches to new systems. And anyone on the call from the School of Cybernetics should recognize those words because that is in fact our current strategy is to do all of those things and to do them in the context of being the only national university in Australia who in turn have a mission to build capacity and competency for the nation and the region. And so this series really is about how do we continue to upskill ourselves and contribute to our own sense of what we are as a collective by inviting some of the most interesting voices in cybernetics who have been in the conversations, who are part of the conversations, who have documented those conversations and bring them into dialogue with us so that we can learn and we can continue to refine, expand and possibly mess <laughs> our own version of what cybernetics is going to be here for us. In the audience, you will find, of course, our staff and our students, you'll also find uh, some of our alumni. I expect you will find some of our partners and members of the community, though really in some ways this is a conversation not for ourselves, but a conversation led by us about where we need to be going. So I started by saying this wasn't going to be a normal speaker series, and those of you who've been around the school for a while know that's quite likely to be the case. And really inspired by what we learned in the pandemic in our classrooms in particular, this is optimised for online engagement, which means it's short and pithy. Uh, it's designed to be engaging. It's designed to be a set of perspectives. It's designed to be, uh, well, a snack. Uh, and I'm hoping that you like snacks, because if you don't, at this point, you find yourself unexpectedly hungry, because looking in the background of these images is some version of almost everyone's favourite snack. We have savoury, we have sweet, we have a little bit of everything. We also know that sometimes when you get to the end of snacks, you think, hmm, I have more questions, or hmm, I want more of that salty goodness, or ooh, more of the sugar. That would be my problem. We've arranged a way so that there'll be follow up goodies that come out of all of these. So stay tuned for ways of being able to read or listen or engage with some of the highlights of all of our various speakers and their various fine works. So there will be snack packs. We also decided that in doing this, we should multitask just a little bit and you know, take advantage of the fact that we were doing this to do some other things. I'm gonna to ask Tom and Danny, who are two of our remarkable PhD students, our very first cohort of PhD students, to talk a little bit about what the extra snack pack might be here. Well, thanks Genevieve. Um... Uh, I'm Tom Chan, it's, um, and and together with Danny Bate, uh, we'll be the sort of co-conveners of this uh, uh, extra snack pack. Um, so on on this slide, um, uh, which I sort of sent to Amy as a bit of a joke, but it's ended up on the main slide. It's a uh, uh, it's a system diagram of what it is. Um, basically, it's a spin-off event of of, of the speaker series. Um, and and so after each of our public seminars, the, the, the PhD students uh, will break out into a separate virtual room with our guest speakers for a slightly more uh, intimate off the record Q&A session. Um, so just uh, allow me to say, well, uh, explain why there's an extra snacks session and just for the PhDs. Um, as, as Genevieve said, uh, we are hungry, 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 growing cyberneticists. 
uh, but seriously, like the like the series, it's a new experiment for us. And um, uh, but we are also uh, echoing uh, past young cyberneticists. Uh, we are inspired uh, by the legendary Ratio Club from the 1940s, which uh, as some some of you would know was a, a group of pioneering British cybernetics thinkers, including the likes of uh, Alan Turing. Uh, from a diverse range of fields and, and, and backgrounds uh, who got together uh, regularly in the basement of a hospital to eat, drink, and hear from a speaker and, and then engage in in-depth intellectual com conversations about uh, issues in cybernetics. Uh, I know, I, I know, Bill. Um, you're a big, uh, big fan of sort of dinner party conversations about being global citizens. Um, we're trying to the, trying to do a bit of that here as well with the PhD students. Um, in, a, in a sort of safe space. Now, one of the rules of, of the original um, OG ratio club uh, was that professors were not allowed and that if anyone was promoted, they had to give up their membership of the club. Now, we're sort of channeling this, uh, the spirit of this, uh, in a kind of a new ratio club uh, for our, the, the, the new cybernetics that we're trying to establish. Um, so this will be um, our experiment uh, right after Bill's uh, um, uh, main talk. Um, we'll, we'll throw every, um, all the PhDs and Bill into a, a basement room, a virtual basement room, um, for us to have these kind of conversations. Um, and hopefully these conversations will also progress our thinking, um, including for our individual research projects. Thank you, Tom. I feel like we need to have two kind of appendices there. One is that at some point for our non-Australian uh, devotees, we may need to explain that that's a halal snack pack, which is in and of itself a kind of extraordinary Australian uh, innovation slash invention slash abomination, depending on how you feel about it, uh, which is often the way with snacks. Some people love them. Some people go, what on earth is that? And why are you putting it in front of me? Uh, if halal snack pack is not something you know, I will invite you to Google it, but not until we're done. And then the second thing you need to know, uh, because there's an Australian ratio club Tom, that I thought you might like to know about. And Catherine, Danielle, wherever you are on the call, this one is for you. So Pat Troy, who is an incredibly important leading light in interdisciplinary studies in Australia, uh, basically brought the field of urban and cultural geography into existence in Australia, was at the University of Sydney back in the day. And they didn't know how to have uh, interdisciplinary conversations at that point. And no one on the university campus would give him a room to have a conversation that brought together people from history, economics, political science, anthropology, sociology, law, and public policy. And no one thought it was their responsibility to host that conversation. And so Pat discovered that if you went to one of the local pubs on the edge of the Sydney campus, the Sydney University campus, and everyone bought a beer, they would lend you the back room between 4 and 6 p.m. for the cost of 20 beers. And so the original conversation that launched the social justice and Urban Geography Research Centre here at the Australian National University uh, started as a 20 beers for a back room. Uh, and the conversation there was not that you couldn't be a professor, it's that you couldn't have a beer in your hand. You didn't have to drink it, you just had to buy it. So where does that leave us now? Well, so we have a series, we have an extra snack pack for our PhD students. We also have a whole tasting platter. God, we are just going to keep going on with this. We have a flight of cyberneticists uh, and people who are cybernetic adjacent that are coming to us over the next little while. We're going to kick off with Bill. I don't, can't believe I get to introduce Bill in a minute. That's completely fabulous. We're going to have Kate Halls, who many of us know, has an amazing book out. We're going to have Michael Airbib, who is an Australian cybernetician early on. Uh, he has a remarkable uh, biography, too. I strongly encourage you to go check it out and then check him out. We have two TBAs because I am off shaking the global tree and I'm hoping we will land two extraordinary people in that intersection. And then we will round out with Paul Pangaro. And a series that kicks off with Bill and ends with Paul is about as good as it gets in terms of anchoring it with some of the most important voices in the last 40 years in cybernetics. So we couldn't be more lucky in that particular way. So one of the ways to make this work because 30 minutes isn't a long time, is to anchor this around a series of questions. This is also to limit the work on our guests, because it's always a bit hard to say, come and turn up, tell us everything you know about cybernetics. <laughs> that seems like a fairly complicated request. So what we thought we'd do instead was just ask people four relatively straightforward questions, and relatively straightforward in that way that the questions we ask 
in the school of cybernetics are always relatively straightforward. We want to talk about why did you end up in cybernetics? What's your kind of connection to cybernetics? That bit that we encourage all of our students to do to be able to reflexively identify how they ended up with the questions that they ended up with and what their personal journey is to that point, because we know who you are and where you come from makes a huge difference to how you engage with and you are uh, aligned to a topic. I'm going to ask people to talk a little bit about the past of cybernetics, which bit of it is their bit or their genealogy or the thing that most excites them or the bit that they can't quite shake or let go of. I want to talk a little bit about where cybernetics is in the present and in their present and then where people think it is going.